April 14, 2024, Third Sunday of Easter. Introduction Dear brothers and sisters, The readings for the third Sunday in Easter year B speak to us about repentance, forgiveness, and the transformative power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear Peter addressing the people, acknowledging their role in the crucifixion of Jesus, yet offering them hope through repentance and conversion. Peter invites them to turn away from sin and return to the Lord so that their sins may be wiped away. This passage reminds us of the importance of acknowledging our faults, seeking forgiveness, and embracing the mercy of God. The responsorial psalm echoes this theme of repentance and trust in the Lord. It is a prayer for God to hear our plea for mercy, to lift the light of His face upon us, and to grant us peace and joy in His presence. Let us turn to the Lord with humble hearts, seeking His forgiveness and grace. In the second reading from the first letter of John, we are reminded that Jesus Christ is our Advocate with the Father, interceding on our behalf and offering us the forgiveness of our sins. It is through our obedience to God's commandments and our love for one another that we show our love for God. Let us strive to follow the example of Christ, walking in His ways and spreading His love to all. In the Gospel reading from Luke, we witness the disciples' encounter with the risen Christ. Jesus appears to them, showing them his wounds and offering them peace. He opens their minds to understand the scriptures and commissions them to be witnesses of his resurrection to all nations. This encounter with the resurrected Christ transforms the disciples, filling them with joy and zeal to share the good news with others. As we reflect on today's readings, let us be reminded of the importance of repentance, forgiveness, and the transformative power of the resurrection in our lives. Let us acknowledge our sins, seek God's mercy, and turn towards Him with contrite hearts. Let us trust in the Lord's compassion and forgiveness, knowing that He is always ready to welcome us back into His loving embrace. The first reading, Acts 3 verses 13 to 15, 17 to 19. The passage from the Acts of the Apostles contained in the first reading of today gives us part of the discourse Peter addressed to the Jews immediately after healing the cripple at the door of the Temple of Jerusalem. It happened as follows. Peter and John were going up to the temple to pray at the usual prayer time at about three o'clock in the afternoon. As they entered the temple, a cripple begged for alms from them. He was crippled from birth, his legs and feet so deformed, that members of his family had to carry him and place him at the temple's gate for him to beg for a few coins from people. Peter, in the name of Jesus, ordered the man to get up, and the man started walking. He was well known to everyone. They had seen him there for years begging for alms day after day. On seeing the man healed, walking briskly, the crowd gathered around Peter and John in amazement. Peter took the opportunity to announce to everyone the good news of Jesus' resurrection. He did not mince words. He started by confronting those listening to him with their sinfulness. This is the gist of what he told them. Do not think that this man has been healed by our power. He has been healed by the power of Jesus. So, you killed him, not Pilate. You took away the life of the Prince of Life, the one by whom everyone and everything lives. He was the Holy One, the only one holy, God's own Son. Yet, when Pilate offered you a choice, you chose Barabbas, a murderer, and asked that Jesus be crucified. Those were hard truths. But having faced the Jews with their sinfulness, Peter proceeded to show them God's mercy. 
to bring them to repentance. You never realized what you were doing. The prophets had foretold time and again that the Messiah would have to suffer and die. Well, you carried out their prophecy. Yet Jesus has risen from the dead. The healing of this man is proof of it. Repent and come back to God, that your sins may be forgiven. In other words, see how extraordinarily good this Jesus is. You killed him, but he saved you. Hasten to repent that he may do so. The second reading, 1 John 2, verses 1 to 5. The concept of Jesus Christ serving as an advocate for believers is central to Christian theology. In 1 John 2, verses 1 to 5, the Apostle John explores this profound role of Jesus as an advocate before God on behalf of his followers. This passage offers insights into the nature of Christ's advocacy, the assurance it provides to believers, and the implications for Christian living. John begins by addressing his audience with affection, expressing his desire for them to avoid sin. However, he acknowledges the reality of human frailty and the inevitability of sin. Despite this, John offers reassurance to believers. Jesus Christ serves as their advocate before the Father. The term advocate, parakletos, carries legal connotations indicating someone who pleads the cause of another. Jesus, described as the righteous one, stands as the perfect advocate, possessing the moral authority to intercede on behalf of sinners. Jesus' advocacy reflects his unique role as both fully God and fully human. As God incarnate, he understands the human condition intimately, empathizing with our weaknesses, Hebrews 4 verse 15. Yet, as the sinless Son of God, He offers a perfect sacrifice for sin, making Him the ideal mediator between humanity and God. 1 Timothy 2 verse 5. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. John elaborates on Jesus' role as the atoning sacrifice for sin, emphasizing the universality of his redemptive work. Christ's advocacy extends beyond the boundaries of ethnicity, nationality, or social status. His sacrifice offers salvation to all who believe. The inclusivity of Jesus' atonement, the breadth of God's love, and his desire for the salvation of every individual. The term, atoning sacrifice, halasmos, denotes the removal of sin's guilt and the restoration of fellowship with God. Through his death on the cross, Jesus satisfied the demands of divine justice, reconciling humanity to God and making forgiveness possible. This act of atonement not only provides forgiveness for past sins, but also ensures ongoing advocacy for believers in their struggle against sin. John transitions from discussing Jesus' advocacy to the evidence of genuine discipleship. True knowledge of Christ is demonstrated not merely by intellectual assent, but by obedience to his commands. This echoes Jesus' own words in John 14 verse 15, where he states, If you love me, keep my commands. The correlation between knowledge of Christ and obedience highlights the transformative power of genuine faith. Believers who truly know Jesus will exhibit a pattern of obedience as they align their lives with his teachings. This obedience is not a means of earning salvation, but a natural outgrowth of a genuine relationship with Christ, empowered by the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. John issues a strong rebuke to those who claim knowledge of Christ but fail to live by his teachings. Such individuals, he asserts, are not merely mistaken but deceitful, lacking the truth of God's word in their lives. Authentic knowledge of Christ necessitates a corresponding lifestyle marked by obedience and righteousness. 
This verse serves as a warning against nominal Christianity, where the profession of faith is divorced from genuine discipleship. Mere intellectual assent or religious affiliation falls short of the relational intimacy and transformative power that true knowledge of Christ entails. John emphasizes the inseparable connection between belief and behavior, challenging believers to live consistently with their professed faith. John concludes by affirming the inseparable link between obedience and love for God. Genuine obedience to Christ's word is evidence of authentic love for God, culminating in a sense of completeness or fulfillment. This love is not self-generated, but a fruit of God's transforming grace at work within believers. The assurance of being in Him, in Christ, is rooted in obedient living. Those who abide in Christ through obedience experience the fullness of fellowship with God and assurance of salvation. This assurance is not based on human merit, but on the faithfulness of Christ, who advocates for believers before the Father. The Gospel Exegesis Luke 24 verses 35 to 48 Last Sunday, we listened to the narration by John of what took place at the apparition of Jesus to his apostles in the evening of the day of his resurrection. In today's Gospel, Luke narrates the same event, but he does it in quite a different manner from the way John does it. Both narrations complement each other, but Luke chooses those words and actions of Jesus that best suited his Christians, most of whom had been pagans before, who lived some thirty years after Jesus' death. In narration, Luke stresses the following three points. Jesus wanted his apostles to clearly understand that also after his resurrection he was both God and man, that is, he was a real body, the very same body that had been nailed to the cross, but now glorious, subject no longer to suffering and death. To convince them of it, Jesus showed them what we could call his identification marks, the wounds left on him by the nails and the soldier's spear. And he went further, he ate before them a piece of grilled fish, the leftovers of their supper. The conclusion was clear, also after his resurrection Jesus continued to be both God and man. Jesus reassured his apostles that he was indeed the Messiah, during Jesus' preaching days, the apostles, through Peter, had decidedly acknowledged Jesus as the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Luke 9 verses 18 to 21 But the events of the Passion had shaken their faith, as it appears from the conversation between Jesus and the two disciples of Emmaus. Luke 24 verse 21 On appearing to his apostles gathered in the upper room, Jesus hastened to repeat to them what he had told the two disciples of Emmaus a few hours earlier, that his suffering and death had been foretold by the prophets, they were proofs of God's love for man not of his powerlessness. Jesus let his apostles know about the great fruit that his death and resurrection had yielded. Because he had died and risen, forgiveness of sins was now available to everyone, no matter how many and how serious anyone's sins might be. And he went further, he entrusted his apostles with the task of going throughout the world, starting from Jerusalem, to proclaim the good news to everyone, God was offering to them his forgiveness, let them accept it and be saved. Unfortunately, we approach the sacrament of reconciliation almost as a matter of fact, as if we had the right to be forgiven. Do we realize the price Jesus paid to obtain forgiveness? So, what are the lessons we can draw from these readings for our lives today? Lessons for Growth 1. Encounter with the Risen Christ The disciples experienced a profound encounter with the resurrected Jesus. 
This encounter transformed their fear and doubt into joy and faith. As Christians, we are called to cultivate a personal encounter with the living Christ through prayer, scripture, the Eucharist, and community. It is in encountering the risen Christ that our faith is renewed and strengthened. 2. Openness to God's Word Jesus opened the minds of the disciples to understand the scriptures. This highlights the importance of being open to God's Word and allowing it to illuminate our minds and hearts. By studying and meditating on the scriptures, we can deepen our understanding of God's will and plan for us. 3. Witnessing to others Jesus commissioned the disciples to be witnesses of his resurrection to all nations. We are also called to be witnesses of the gospel in our words and actions. By sharing our faith with others, we can bring the light of Christ to those who are in darkness and lead them to encounter the love and mercy of God. For peace and forgiveness, Jesus offered the disciples peace and showed them his wounds as a sign of forgiveness. As followers of Christ, we are called to be instruments of peace and reconciliation in the world. We are called to forgive others as we have been forgiven by God and to work towards building bridges and healing relationships. 5. Empowerment for Mission Jesus empowered the disciples with the Holy Spirit to go forth and proclaim the gospel. We too are empowered by the Holy Spirit through our baptism and confirmation to be agents of change and transformation in the world. Let us not be afraid to step out in faith and courageously share the love and message of Christ with others. Personal Question or Actions for Today Reflect on your encounters with the risen Christ in your life. How have these encounters transformed your faith and understanding of God's love for you? Take some time to meditate on a specific passage from the scriptures, perhaps from the Gospels or other books of the Bible. Ask God to open your mind and heart to understand His Word more deeply. Consider how you can be a witness of the gospel in your daily life. Are there opportunities for you to share your faith with others through your words, actions, or deeds? Is there anyone in your life whom you need to offer forgiveness to or seek reconciliation with? Take steps today to extend a gesture of peace and forgiveness towards them. Pray for the guidance and empowerment of the Holy Spirit in your life. Ask God to show you how you can be a light and agent of change in your community and the world around you. Concluding Prayer Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we reflect on the we are reminded of the incredible sacrifice your Son, Jesus Christ, made for us on the cross. Despite the mockery and suffering he endured, Jesus showed great love, forgiveness, and mercy towards his enemies and those who crucified him. Grant us the grace to embody the same love and forgiveness in our own lives. Help us to forgive those who have wronged us, to show compassion to those in need, and to extend your grace to all we encounter. May the story of Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection inspire us to deepen our faith, grow in our compassion, and live out your teachings in our daily lives. Give us the strength and courage to be witnesses of your love and redemption to all those around us. We offer this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.